All right, part C. The ball is in contact with the ground for a time of 0.091 seconds. The ball rebounds with uh, a velocity of 5.4. Deco, uh, look. The ball is in contact with the ground for a certain amount of time. Now, when you hit the ground, what was your speed? Your speed was 8.7. There's a lot of vectors in this question. When you rebounded, which means you went back up, your speed became 5.4. I always tell you velocity is a vector quantity. Whenever you're dealing with any vector quantity, what do you do? You change the sign if the direction changes. Because if downward direction is positive, upward direction cannot be positive. It has to be negative. So whenever direction changes, remember this, remember this in your exams, you have to change the sign. So it's up to you. You take this as plus and you take this as minus. That's completely your call. You, or you take uh, 5.4 as plus and 8.7 as minus. Completely your call. But you have to change the sign because the answer will change if you do not take the sign into account and that will be the wrong answer. So force, oh no, actually the change in momentum will be mv minus mu. Your mass is 0 0.059 as they've said. Your final velocity is minus 5.4. Now, this is the negative sign of the formula that that comes as it is. Um, minus 0 0.059 into the initial velocity, which is plus 8.7. And you solve this, and you will you can actually take 0 0.059 common, and you will get minus 5.4 minus 8.7, because this plus and this minus will multiply, it will, be, will give you minus. So let's do it in the calculator. That's 8.7 and 5.4 times 0 0.059. The answer that I'm getting is minus 0 0.83. So you can write that as minus 0 0.83. And because they only ask, look at the question. They're only asking for the magnitude of the change. You can absolutely ignore, you should ignore the negative sign. Why have they asked you for the magnitude? Because there could be kids who would take this direction is plus and this direction is minus because they haven't mentioned which direction is positive and which direction is negative. But if you don't do this and you simply take 8.7 and 5.4 and you plug them here, you're not going to get the right answer. So just remember that taking the right direction as uh, positive and negative, either one of them is important. You can't do your question, any vector question without that. Now, what is the magnitude of the average resultant force? So average resultant force is rate of change of momentum. So the change in momentum is 0 0.83 and the time that it took you was 0 0.091. Divide 0 0.83 divided by 0 0.091. And the answer that you get is 9.14 newtons. You can write that as 9.1 newtons. Use your answer in C to calculate the magnitude of the average force exerted by the ground on the ball. Now you know the forces are equal and opposite. The first question is, when, you, when your ball strikes the ground, how much force did it exert on the ground? Two forces, not one. One was the force due to the collision, due to the speed. That was one force. And the other one was the weight of the ball that is also going to impact on the ground. So th the force, the total force acting on the ground is this. So as a result, when they're asking you what is the average force exerted by the ground on the ball, they're asking you for this force. What is the force exerted by the ground on the ball? You're going to say it is going to be the same as F and W which is 9.1 newtons and the weight of the object. What was the weight? We don't have the weight, we have the mass, which is 0 0.059. So I'm gonna do 0 0.059 times 9.81. So 0 0.059 times 9.81 plus 9.1. I'm getting 9.67 newtons. So 9.7 newtons is the answer. I hope this is clear. The ball was thrown downwards at t is equal to zero and it hits the ground at t is equal to t. Sketch a graph of the speed of the ball. Direction does not matter. And you started off with some initial speed. You, they've said that the numerical values are not required. You knew that A resistance was negligible, so acceleration was constant. So this is simply going to be a straight line from here to there. 
In practice, air resistance is not negligible. Stay and explain any variation, if any, you have to explain it. So I have to explain the theory as well, rather than just explaining what will happen with the with the graph. Stay and explain the variation of any of the gradient when air resistance is not negligible. So first of all, air resistance will increase as your speed increases. So, your acceleration will decrease. And because acceleration will decrease, hence it will be, hence the graph will be a curve with decreasing gradient. Because you know that the gradient of this graph gives acceleration. And you're admitting the fact that the acceleration will decrease. That means that the gradient will decrease. And what does gradient decrease look like? It looks like this. Speed into the burn. When you're falling, your speed has to increase. When you're falling, your speed has to increase. So if I'm sketching it for the same scenario, my speed is increasing because I'm falling, but my acceleration is decreasing because air resistance is going up. So the gradient of the graph will decrease. And that's it.